In the last months of 2025, Russia's aerospace industry is at a crucial point, shown by the ongoing progress of the MC-21 Jetliner's certification program and a practical reassessment of how many two Tu-14 planes can be produced. As the MC-21 fulfills long-standing ambitions for high-volume indigenous airliner production, industry insiders, enterprise managers, and test pilots alike have been closely monitoring developments. Meanwhile, the Tu-14 is transitioning to a measured output after years of fluctuating forecasts. In October 2025, the MC-21 program reached a major milestone when four different aircraft completed 20 flights under the certification trials framework. Initially, the Russian aviation media misjudged the size of the testbed fleet, believing that the introduction of the MC-21-310, which was assigned the new registration number 73057, represented the addition of only a third airframe. During this time, the program was operating four aircraft, each of which was responsible for the validation of critical onboard systems and the execution of an intensive flight schedule. MC-21, with the serial numbers 73051, 73054, and 73055, were among the aircraft that were in active duty. The most recent addition to the roster, 73057, was introduced late in the month. It is the first completely domestic variant, featuring indigenous Russian systems throughout. Industry observers provide comprehensive accounts that demonstrate a methodical approach to satisfying technical and regulatory benchmarks, further emphasized by the multifaceted test campaign. All of the jets in the MC-21 fleet fulfilled specialized functions that were essential for the aircraft's intricate certification requirements. The earliest specimen, 73051, also known as MC.0001 in documentation, had been previously assigned to ground tests for lightning protection at Zhukovsky. This exercise was crucial in verifying the effectiveness of Russian-made electrical subsystems and novel aircraft design philosophies. Upon its return to the air, the crew of 73051 conducted specialized flights to evaluate the radiolocation altimeter's efficacy in various wing configurations. Simultaneously, the tests verified the operations of the environmental control system, the complex automatic pressure regulation module, and the airflow systems that are directly connected to the power plants. These components are essential for the safety of the aircraft and the comfort of its passengers. During October, MC-21 number 7354 completed an impressive nine flights, which is an indication to the complexity and tempo of the service program. The main purpose of these flights was to test the collision avoidance system and onboard avionics, which are advanced Russian digital technologies designed to meet international airspace standards. The joint trials coordinated with 2214RA64509 a repurposed flying laboratory previously operated by Transero are particularly noteworthy. The collaborative flights facilitated the real-time assessment of integrated warning and communication systems that are essential for the operation of modern airliners. The third main aircraft, MC-21 No. 7, 3055, repeated 73054's accomplishments by conducting nine sorties of its own. Standard civil air traffic routes were recreated in these extended missions, which included grueling round journeys from Zhukovsky near Moscow to Vorkuta in northern Russia, a route that spans up to 3,800 kilometers per leg. Along with testing the aircraft's ability to navigate and fly for long periods using its own systems, these long flights also checked how well the transponders worked for air traffic control and how strong the communication systems were on board. The MC-21-310, registered as 73057, represents a significant milestone in the development of Russian aviation. This variant, which will commence the test campaign at the end of October, incorporates an exhaustive array of Russian-made instruments and subsystems. The highly anticipated PD-14 engines, Russian digital avionics, flight control systems, and sophisticated composite wings 
all manufactured offshore, equipped the airframe. The jet's new livery and configurations were prominently displayed in the photo reports from October, which was an important turning point in the civil airliner sector of Russia's transition to true technological independence. Industry observers have expressed cautious optimism and praise for the synchronization and rhythm of these flight tests. In a single month, Russia's program managers have established a strong precedent for the upcoming certification milestones by conducting 20 flights using four distinct test platforms. The objective to complete certification by 2026 appears feasible as each sortie completed contributes to the accumulation of experience and data in preparation for the eventual transition to serial production. While the 2214 project at the Kazan Aviation Plant experiences a pragmatic recalibration, the MC-21 project continues to advance with unwavering momentum. Local media in the autumn of 2025 report that the mass production rates for the 2214 will remain unattainable through the end of the decade, despite the optimistic promises made to national leaders in 2022. In reality, the revised objective is to produce 10 TU-214 aircraft annually by 2030, a figure that is based on the incremental modernization of production lines and the realities of the factory. The current indicators show that Kazan's initial objective is to consistently produce six aircraft annually within the next three years, provided that the successful implementation of modern manufacturing systems is achieved. Recent years have demonstrated this prudent approach by delivering only one TU-214 per cycle. In reality, Kazan can only achieve double-digit output by stabilizing and adapting its industrial foundation, thereby qualifying as a systematic manufacturer of the type. In distinct contrast, the Irkutsk Aviation Factory is advancing rapidly as the MC-21 test and production infrastructure continues to develop. New machinery and expanded assembly lines reinforce the company's capacity for high-volume aerostructure fabrication and integration, prompting Russian media outlets to commend Irkutsk's readiness. The complexity and scope of Russian endeavors to modernize and automate component fabrication are reflected in the arrival of state-of-the-art milling centers, each of which can weigh up to 33 tons. These units, designed for intricate operations like spar and rib production, underwent a rigorous installation and commissioning process in October. A key point for the MC-21 program is moving from setup to being ready to operate, which allows for the quick production of large, precisely made parts. Russia's aerospace transformation extends beyond Irkutsk and Kazan, Local companies have initiated the integration of Russia's first automatic panel riveters for aviation manufacturing in Nizhny Novgorod, another critical node in the MC-21 supply chain. The momentum is expected to persist as four additional advanced devices are scheduled for deployment within the next two years. Meanwhile, Engineers at the Sokol Enterprise have successfully completed the initial underkeel compartment assembly for the MC-21-310. This technological milestone establishes an annual production goal of 24 modules in Nizhny Novgorod, with additional support from Ulyanovsk. The integrative ethos of Russia's reformed aerospace ecosystem will be further bolstered by the fact that all assemblies will ultimately feed into Irkutsk. The MC-21 program is progressing toward its critical certification objectives for 2026 as Nizhny Novgorod increases sub-assembly throughput and Irkutsk continues to develop foundational capacity. The initial tangible steps into volume manufacturing are anticipated to be taken by enterprise managers next year with the delivery of two additional serially configured aircraft it is widely anticipated that 2027 will be the turning point for MC-21, as high-frequency production lines will be operational and commercial deliveries will commence in earnest. Deputy Prime Minister Vitaly Savelyev publicly confirmed Aeroflot's blockbuster order for 200 units in late October 2025. These developments are in conjunction with this order.
The MC-21 thus firmly establishes its status as the main civil airliner of Russia for the upcoming decade. Savlev's simultaneous speculative orders for 100 Tu-214s by S-7 airlines are met with skepticism due to the Kazan plant's well-documented production constraints. The entire Russian aviation industrial base is currently in the process of renewal and rationalization. In October 2025, there were significant improvements in the preparation for component manufacture and supply logistics, as well as in airframe assembly and panel riveting. The country's commitment to transitioning from imported technologies to self-sufficient system integration is facilitated by the strategic alignment of multiple manufacturing centers and the implementation of high-throughput equipment. MC-21 program managers are investing in reliability, regulatory conformance, and international competitiveness at every stage, including lightning protection testing, long-haul navigation assessment, and certification flights with live air traffic. Nevertheless, the Russian aviation sector continues to confront substantial constraints despite the optimism that has built up around the MC-21. The complexities of scaling up production, particularly when modernizing ancient factories and qualifying legacy staff for new processes, are emphasized by Kazan's measured progress. Finishing and integration are contingent upon the expeditious delivery of sub-assemblies from partner sites, although Irkutsk is increasing the MC-21's assembly tempo. Nevertheless, the sector's resilience is evident in its capacity to coordinate extensive national initiatives, retool antiquated machinery, and retrain technical personnel at each major aerospace installation. Looking forward, the Russian civil aviation is on the brink of a new era, which will be characterized by the development of domestic technology and the strengthening of supply chains by the conclusion of autumn 2025. The MC-21 program serves as a model for scalable innovation due to its remarkable production ramp-up and comprehensive flight test campaign. At the same time, the pragmatic revision of 2214 targets at Kazan indicates a readiness to adjust ambitions in accordance with industrial realities rather than political commitments. The industry's transition from small batch experimentation to sustained series manufacture will be set in motion by the conclusion of MC21 certification and the delivery of numerous new airframes as 2026 approaches. The potential to launch additional international export campaigns and deliver 200 aircraft to Aeroflot solidifies MC-21's position at the forefront of Russian aerospace. Nevertheless, the journey is far from over. Russia's aircraft manufacturers must keep going in their efforts to unlock capacity at legacy facilities, expand the boundaries of automated and digital production, and foster downstream innovation through supply chain collaboration. The events of October 2025 serve as a testament to the potential for rapid advancement when strategic objectives are aligned with technological implementation, all under the overarching principles of modernization and self-reliance. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us